This conference will now be recorded. So good afternoon, everybody. Today's uh, dermatology class is skin manifestations in diabetes mellitus. So this is a quite an important and uh, interesting topic for you. It will be useful even in uh, general, your general medicine. So pay attention to this class. So what is the incidence of uh, skin manifestations in diabetes? It's usually 30 to 70 percent, which is quite high uh, according to different studies. And uh, usually the skin manifestations will precede the development of diabetes. So in a way, they give us the signs. So if, if you are a good clinician, if you know these signs, you will be able to uh, you know, take care of the patient much better and you can give them a better treatment. So the skin manifestations, uh, their, their prevalence is similar in both type 1 and type 2. So both in both types of diabetes, you will see this. And uh, cutaneous infections, these are more common in type 2, whereas uh, autoimmune diseases are more common in type 1. And also a very good metabolic control will help in preventing and also in curing some of the skin manifestations. So having an idea on the skin manifestations not only gives you a clue, but also uh, it will, uh, you can treat the patient, like I said, uh, you can treat them better. And coming to the uh, pathogenesis. So what exactly, uh, how the, exactly this, this diabetes and skin manifestations, how are they related? Why are we seeing this? Uh, first, first cause is the metabolic changes which happen in our body because of diabetes. So one is uh, there will be hyperglycemia, as you know. This hyper, due to hyperglycemia, there will be non-enzymatic glycosylation of collagen and there will be formation of non-degradable advanced uh, glycosylated end products in our body. And uh, the decre with decreased acid solubility and there will be de uh, degradation of collagen. And also uh, the activity of uh, lipoprotein lipases is directly dependent on insulin. And insulin deficiency leads to the uh, uh, defective processing of uh, uh, chylomicrons and uh, also very, do lo very uh, low density lipoproteins and also hypertriglyceridemia. Next, next to the next is the immune dysregulation. First is the metabolic, now the second is the immune dysregulation. This hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis it will diminish chemotaxis on phagocytic, uh, phagocytosis and also the bactericidal activity of WBC. See, overall, our immunity itself is getting compromised. So this will lead to the uh, more frequent occurrence of infections. Also, insulin acts on the uh, IGF-1 receptor and this will lead to the abnormal pro epidermal proliferation. So there is increased uh, production of the epidermal cells. Also, diabetes is uh, a very quite, uh, in according to many studies, diabetes is uh, related to acanthosis nigricant. Many phenotypes of ac acanthosis nigricant have direct relation to diabetes. And also, the, uh, there will be effect on blood vessels. There will be microangiopathy and macroangiopathy. This will lead to the occurrence of diabetic foot ulcers and also impaired uh, neuroinflammatory signaling pathways. They cause decreased healing. The healing will become very less. That is why these ulcers, they become quite chronic. And coming to the classification of the manifestations. We have vascular manifestations, metabolic, ne necrobiotic, bullous, infections, also neuropathic uh, manifestations and also treatment-related uh, conditions 
and also miscellaneous. So, what are the vascular? What are the vascular uh, uh, changes we see? There will be diabetic dermatopathy and uh, rubiosis facial, erysipelas like erythema, pigmented purpura, and also periangual telangiectasia. And coming to the metabolic related conditions, we, uh, what you will see is acanthosis nigricans, like I to, told you all, already, the phenotype of uh, acanthosis nigricans is very directly related to um, uh, diabetes mellitus. There will be eruptive xanthomas and uh, yellow skin and nails, and also diabetic scleroderma. And uh, necrobiotis lipodica and granuloma annular are also quite common. And coming to the bullus, we will see bullus diabetic orum, very common. Most of you might have seen in your uh, clinics. And also infections like bacterial and fungal. Naturally, these are infections, are, like I told you, they are more common in diabetics if you compare to the normal population. And also neuropathic, like uh, increased or decreased sweating. That is anhydrosis or hyperhidrosis and also neuropathic concerns and coming to the treatment related uh, uh, conditions like uh, the side effects uh, of uh, treatment in diabetes. It's insulin reactions, photosensitivity and glycolide reaction and there are some miscellaneous conditions. Now coming to, we will discuss the most common of these conditions we will discuss today. So coming to the diabetic dermatopathy. So uh, here on the shins of these patient, patients, you will see multiple round or oval macules over the shins, that is thighs and forearms and uh, hyperpigmentation atrophy. These are also seen and uh, they are more common in men, older men. And uh, usually um, diabetic, if to term this as uh, dermatopathy, there should be more than four lesions. And, may, and also the mark, it's, this is a marker of microvascular disease. And also there is high correlation with diabetic term, uh, retinopathy. So if you say diabetic dermatopathy, then definitely retinal examination is important. And also this can be secondary to any trauma or any uh, pyodermas, that is infections. And also it represents post-traumatic atrophy and uh, uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation in poorly vascular uh, skin and endothelial proliferation, past positive deposits in the basement membrane of the blood vessels is also seen in histopathology. And this doesn't require any treatment because all you see are the pigmented, just pigmented lesions over the shins. See, this is a typical picture. Um, as you can see, this is uh, uh, sh you can see the shin of the uh, patient, and here uh, you will see hyperpigmented macules which are present all over the shins. Next is rubiosis facial, that is rosy redness of the face. It's evident in uh, most newly diagnosed diabetic patients. And it, this is associated with vascular, vascular tone and also increased viscosity uh, of the blood and often a sign of poor glycemic control and returns to normal with improved uh, glycemic control. Since it's only some conditions, uh, you, can, you can manage them with better treatment. Uh, so that is why it's important to know these conditions. So please pay attention. See this lady, you can see have the redness over her chin or her face over the mala region and over her forehead overall you can see, see there is redness of the face and also next is erysipelas like erythema this is well demarcated red areas on uh, feet and uh, on feet and also on legs and this is a painless uh, condition you can see in uh, very old uh, diabetic patients like who are more than 73 years and underlying bone destruction will be may, may be seen and there will be compensated increase in peripheral microvasculation caused by the decreased perfusion because the blood vessels are compromised uh, that is why there is decreased perfusion and spontaneous resolution over weeks uh, but it may reoccur though it may spontaneously disappear there is always chance to reoccur um, and this is a picture, as you can see, erysipelas like well demarcated area of redness. 
unpigmented purpura next rbc extravasation from superficial flex uh, superficial plexus of blood vessels you will see cyanide paper like spots that is red macules to orange tan patches so the lesions range from macules to patches and frequently associated with diabetic dermatopathy and also there is increased incidence in again elderly and those with cardiac failure and this is a marker of microvascular disease so this is a picture of uh, purpura next is periangual telangiectasia dentition is usually seen in 50% of the uh, diabetics mega capillaries and uh, irregular elongated uh, loops are seen often associated with nail fold erythema mm, uh, and accompanied by fingertip tenderness and ragged cuticles and also the functional microangiopathy tortuosity indicates structural changes see you can see uh, this is the rag, ragged cuticle is seen and also see nail fold uh, erythema is also present next coming to the metabolic uh, conditions acanthosis eruptus xanthoma yellow skin and nails and diabetic scleroderma This acanthosis nigricans readily recognize skin manifestation. This you will definitely see this. I'm sure every um, almost all of you might have seen. If not, need not see in the hospital. Even in your family members also, you will definitely see at least one person with uh, with acanthosis. And this should be this is a prognostic indicator. So very important acanthosis nigricans. You have to know this. Mm, as a, so once you see a patient. is having acanthic cysts nigricans and it is increasing then definitely you should ask them to get checked for their uh, blood sugar levels also this is linked with ob obesity insulin resistance and also hyperandrogenism and drug related also it, it can also be idiopathic and sometimes familial also so hyperinsulinemia is uh, leads excess insulin uh, bind, binds to IGF-1 receptors on the keratinocytes and fibroblasts, and uh, that causes aberrant proliferation of keratinocytes and fibroblasts. Here you'll see symmetrical velvety to varicose hyperpigmented blocks. These are associated with papillomatous skin tags. Usually, axilla, nape of the neck are the areas you see the acanthosis nigricans. Occasionally, hands and feet and mucous membranes. treatment is red reduction of weight keratolytics and topical retinoic acid see well you can see the very symmetric velvety hyperpigmented uh, thick block over this patient's neck so this is a tip you can see similar kind of lesion in the axilla also next coming to the eruptive xanthomas another very common condition it occurs in less than 0.1% of this diabetic patients here you will see uh, crops of uh, small yellow papules with an erythematous halo and these papules will range from like 1 to 4 mm and sometimes they can be pruritic and tender also buttocks and extensors can get affected and also appears in association with elevated triglycerides and the results with treatment of hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia so and uh, the treatments include includes not just standard diabetic drugs but also anti lipidemic drugs see small uh, 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 this is a typical lesions uh, xanthomatous lesions they are shiny papules which are present like this discreetly see similar kind of lesions you will sometimes see oh, even over the uh, upper uh, over the eyelid on the medial aspect of the uh, eyelid you will see this kind of shiny yellowish lesions that is called as xanthelasma palpebrum that is also a very important feature in diabetes see as you can see the yellow papules and the erythematous halo i hope you can appreciate next coming to the yellow skin and nails see yellow skin and nails uh, is seen in 40% of type 2 diabetic patients 
again this is also most common in elderly and more evident in the distal end of the hallux and uh, this is caused by the uh, hyperkeratinemia and uh, protein glycosylated end products so these are the uh, these uh, these uh, products are the reason you will see the typical uh, yellowish skin and nails and next coming to the scleroderma diverticulum sorry i have some cold and uh, okay so scleroderma diverticulum uh, inside in, it has insidious onset of uh, painless symmetric induration and thickening of skin on which areas upper back neck and also it spreads to face shoulders and also torso here you will see non pitting woody pudy orange type of appearance of skin and seen with uh, long standing diabetic patients and in those with obesity and also this is mostly again related to type 2 diabetes mellitus the pathogens you will see this is uh, why this is occurring is because of the unregulated pro pro production of ecms by fibroblast and also leading to increased deposit uh, deposition of glycosaminoglycans ecm is extracellular matrix for your information and also the decreased sensation of pain and light touch is seen in this condition and also presence of scleroderma does not correlate with retinopathy or nephropathy neuropathy or any or others or any principal vascular disease so this is not related to vascularity uh, the, uh, and the treatment in, uh, here treatment is uh, it improves with glycemic control so a better uh, glycemic control is required and uh, also low dose methotrexate and uh, um, puva that is uh, sorlins and uva and also extracorporeal photophoresis see so this is a condition you will see see the thickness the th here you will see the typical uh, thickness of the uh, skin is seen here over the over the hands of this uh, person so the main is when you uh, it's more like you can appreciate if you touch the patient the skin almost feels like wood now coming to the necrobiasis lipidica this is strongly associated and a valid marker of diabetes the possible role of an antibody mediated vasculitis as an initiating event in diabetes uh, Uh, diabetes uh, sorry necrobiasis lipidica and now coming to the clinical features this is usually seen in young middle aged females here form dull red papule or plaque which enlarges radially to become a yellowish atrophic plaque Uh, with an erythematous edge is seen and the surface is often glazed in appearance and uh, telangiectasic vessels may be prominent giving glazed porcelain like sheen what is glaze that typical uh, shine or the glow will be there that and uh, um lesions are usually symptomless hypoesthesia or anesthesia will be present and hypohidrosis that is decreased sweating may be present anterior tibial region is more commonly affected ulceration is a serious complication uh, and some squamous cell carcinoma may develop in a long standing cases and again this is also common with type 2 diabetes than type 1 see ne necrobiasis lipidica you can see the thick erythematous plaques present you have that shiny glazed porcelain like appearance 
Now, how do you treat it? Intralesional steroids to the active advancing border and uh, uh, short-term uh, systemic steroids and cyclosporin is also helpful. Topical steroids, retinoids, uh, sorins and UVA, fumaric esters are also used. And split thickness skin grafting in recalcitrant ulcers is required. And if this persists, despite glycemic good glyce glycemic control, uh, despite that, this this will persist. And this is this disease is chronic and 20% remit spontaneously over six months to one year. And now coming to the disseminated granuloma annulae. There is no clear established association between the localized form of granuloma annular and diabetes. Skin colored are erythematous papules arranged in an annular pattern with a flat center is seen in this. And the symmetric distribution is seen over the arm, leg and upper half of the trend. And it runs a protracted course. See, this is a typical lesion of granuloma annular. Here you can see annular lesion. And the center, and the center, see the look at the center. Here the center is flattened, normal. Here also the center is flattened. Compared to the periphery, the center is flat. And treatment of granuloma annular, this can granuloma annular is also a condition will disappear spontaneously, but sometimes it might require treatment like intralesion. Uh, condition is bullous diabetic forum. It's more common in type 1 diabetes. See, as until now, you have uh, we have come across all the conditions which are actually more common and more associated with the type 2 diabetes. But now, uh, this condition is uh, more common with type 1 diabet uh, diabetes mellitus, also more commonly seen in uh, males than females. Here the patient develops spontaneous blisters Mm, there are three types of this uh, bullous diabetic forum. The most common type is uh, clear sterile blisters on fingertips and toe tips, which heal without scarring. Next, there you can see hemorrhagic bulla. That means the bulla, when it ruptures, it contains blood in it. Um, with this, this heal with the scarring and multiple tender non-scarring blisters in sun-exposed areas is the third type. See here you can see the bullous diabetic forum over the dorsum of the uh, second toe.
the patient uh, person is diabetic and uh, and his many of his toes got amputated uh, amputated or the feet getting amp amputated or inter or even like uh, getting amputated so all this because of these ulcers due to peripheral neuropathy trauma and pressure and uh, ill fitting shoes socks are the main reason so that is why it's very important uh, for diabetics to take care of their feet they should be very careful with their feet and fit footwear and also callus formation precede Yeah. And next, there is delayed reaction where you'll see itchy nodule at least two to four hours after injection of insulin. And next is la lipoatrophy. Here you'll see circumscribed depressed area of six to 12 months after starting treatment. And also, immune complex mediated inflammation is quite common. After lipoatrophy, it is lipohypertrophy.
uh, this is a, a concise version of all the uh, um, skin manifestations in diabetic mellitus. I hope uh, this class was uh, useful for you. Thank you.